Axios and Express using query URL parameters. Query parameters are a way of passing data from a client to a server. They use the URL itself to encode data as a series of key value pairs. So notice this example of a URL to a video on YouTube. It has the protocol HTTPS colon slash slash, the domain www.youtube.com, the path slash watch, and then some additional data as part of the URL, starting with the question mark. So there's a question mark, V equals some value, an ampersand, and then T equals some value. In the above example, the keys are V and T. Their values are PY3, L uppercase I, GK uppercase H, 07 uppercase M, and the value of T is 10S. The ampersand is used between the key value pairs. Notice this encodes extra data. So there is the protocol, their domain, and the path as part of the URL, and then this extra data that's encoded as part of the query or part of the URL as parameters, extra data passed along as part of the URL itself. Query parameters are often used with get request to send this extra information, such as in the previous example, which video to load, which was the V value, and the time to start the video, which was the T value on YouTube. URLs also have special rules in how they are constructed. They cannot contain spaces, and they understand other symbols like the colon as part of the protocol. I mentioned the HTTPS colon slash slash. That's part of the protocol. The package Axios can help with encoding data. So instead of worrying about the special rules URL has or consulting some type of list, we can use Axios as part of working with JavaScript and it will take care of the encoding data process for us. We just tell it what we want to encode and it will take care of it. So Axios understands query parameters as part of the params property of its config object. So when we in particular use the get method of Axios, it takes two arguments, two sets of data. The first is the URL string. Notice in this case in the Axios code, HTTP colon slash slash local host. So the protocol, HTTP colon slash slash, the domain, where to send it, the local host, and the path slash example. Then as a second argument to the get method, we have its config object. Within this, we have a property called params. In this particular case, in the Axios code on the slide, params has two properties, first name, which has the value Dan, and last name, which has the value Cox. Notice at the bottom, the URL result on the same slide. We see the protocol, HTTP colon slash slash, the domain, the location, local host, the path slash example, and then that question mark, and then notice the encoding of first name, the key is equal to Dan, its value, the ampersand between the two key value pairs, and then the key last name with its value, Cox. Key value pairs with an ampersand between them. But notice in the use of the Axios code, the full URL was not written out. Instead, the params property of the config object, the second argument to the get method of Axios, was used and Axios took care of creating the URL from this. So as part of handling data, Axios will make sure all data encoding and all special symbols, such as spaces, are encoded correctly. Notice in this case, this second example of Axios code, again, using the get method with the beginning of the URL, so the protocol, domain, and path, and then as the additional information using the params property of the config object it's part of the second argument to this method. Notice the resulting URL has encoded a plus sign as a space that was represented in the string value of the name property of params. So we see params has two properties, name and example, and Axios has handled the encoding of data along with the special symbol. It can't have spaces. It has replaced it with the plus sign. Notice in either case in the previous slide or in this slide, None of the URLs were written out and instead Axios was used to encode that data using its params property. This has been an example of the last line in this slide of the client code using Axios. What about the server code? 
Well, Express understands query parameters. For all incoming requests, Express translates all query parameters as property of its request.query object for any particular route. So for example, notice the Axios code for the client side. It has the protocol, the domain, and the path, and then has params with two examples here as properties, name and example. And then in the express code, notice correspondingly also using the get method, except in this case with app instead of Axios, because it's part of express, we see the path it's listening for slash example. And then as part of the request object, request.query, dot name and request dot query dot example name and example match the exact name of the properties from params on the client side on the client side it's params with name and example and this matches exactly to the properties that are created on the client side in express as part of the request dot query object so having explained that, let's look at some example code in Visual Studio and just go over these concepts one more time. So I'm going to move over to Visual Studio Code. So over in Visual Studio Code, you notice I've divided up the screen in a special way here. I have over here the Explorer view of two different Node projects, client and server, because I'm using Node.js as two different projects here. I have right here in my sort of middle column, an example of using this tool up here, I have split the editor for a left and a right. On the left is my client code. I've also split the terminal down here, notice client, and I've split the server code over on the right hand side and down here in the terminal split the server code over here. So over here we have the use of Axios using async and await because Axios get all of its methods or promises. And then I have the URL I'm using, its protocol, its domain, and a port in this case, which I'll explain shortly, and then the path slash example. And then notice right here, the use of a config object with params as a property of that, as I've highlighted right here, and it says uh, in its tooltip in parentheses property. So I have first name and last name as properties of this param, which are then going to be sent over to the server, which is over on my right hand side. So this server is listening on port 8888. It is listening for the path slash example using git. This will send Axios that git sending a git request on the path slash example of localhost using this port. And then I am using response.json to send back the request.query object. And then finally, over here on the client code, my line 15, when it's finally done and we have awaited this promise to finish, it will show in the console the data it got back from the server. So we're going to send information from the client to the server. The server is going to respond with that data back to the client. So over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and start my server. I have an index.js file. And then I will need to, over here on the left-hand side, start my client. It will again send data to the server. The server will interpret that extra query parameters as part of its request.query object and then send it right back to the client. And then as we see, we got this right here. So we sent as params first name and last name. It then became request.query.firstName and then request.query.lastName, which was then sent right back over here. And we see as response.data is equal to an object, request.query, with first name Dan, last name Cox. So as we can see, using query parameters, we can encode them using Axios, particularly in working with the get method as part of the second argument to the get method. As part of the config object, we can use the params property. By assigning it an object, we can then tell Axios to encode a series of values as part of the URL, this is then sent to Express. In Express, we can use the request.query object on its side to parse any incoming URL query parameters and then use that data from that point on. So in this example, again, sent information from the client to the server. The server responded with whatever it got right back to the client so we could see that data used. 
This has been a review of how to use query parameters, URL parameters, using Axios on the client and Express on the server.